Hi everyone, welcome to the Ask Dr. Lin show where I take questions from commercial and industrial bakers who reach out to me through Bakerpedia and LinkedIn. The best part of my job is answering questions that affect your processes as an industrial baker. Need a softer and longer shelf life for your product? Don't worry, I've got these questions covered in today's session. So thank you for joining me today. I am Dr. Lin from Bakerpedia, the world's largest resource for technical baking information. Do you have a baking question? Bakerpedia, still haven't solved all your questions? Place any comments on the topics that you are researching on Bakerpedia and I'll try my best to answer them on this show. Well, fans of Bakerpedia, here goes. When bakers tell me that their bread goes hard, it really means that the bread has staled. Staling at 24 hours? Well, my baker friend, you have a problem on your hands. Now, before we start, kudos for you for using a sponge and dough and a low protein flour. These parameters are important for a softer bread. Okay, first, go to the staling page and check out what contributes to staling. Starch retrogradation is a huge issue and this page will provide you more information on how to prevent starch retrogradation. Remember, staling is due mainly to the realignment of the network, making it less flexible and less resilient. However, if there are more water in this system to start with, it will slow down the realignment. Therefore, optimum water absorption is key to make sure that there is adequate gluten hydration. Be sure to read your farina graphs and determine proper absorption for your dose. Less than optimum water absorption will give you a bucky dough and leave you with a hard loaf of bread. Don't forget, with this information, you need to mix your dough to full development. Why? Because at full development, your gluten network is agile enough to tolerate stresses in the production process and maintain the gases within the loaf. More gas equal more volume, which would result in a softer loaf of bread. So, in summary, optimal water absorption will give better mixing properties that will result in a better developed dough that can retain more gas and remain soft. Phew. Well, there is one last technique that you can use to keep your bread moist and fresher over shelf life. Believe it or not, it's how you bake the bread in the oven. Many bakers bake to the final color of the loaf or whoever taught them to bake a certain time and temperature, you know? So I need you to take this concept and flip it over on its head because that's not the right way to bake. The method of a proper bake is in its arrival or the internal temperature of the bread. It's not in the color of the loaf of the bread. Go to this page and you can read more about arrival times which is the amount of time the internal temperature of the bread sits above 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, water is escaping the loaf while coloration darkens. The longer the loaf sits in the crumb set zone, or if the arrival is less than 85%, the more water is driven out of the loaf. In many instances, I have been to bakeries where their arrival is at 70%. Yes, 70%. That means in a 30 minute bake, nine minutes of this bake is above 200 degrees Fahrenheit, where it should only be at 85% or 4.5 minutes. Can you see now? 4.5 minutes versus nine minutes. Can you imagine cutting your bake by about five minutes, not only will this open up your bottleneck, which is usually at the ovens, but it will also give you a softer product. So now, can I convince you to bake using an internal thermal profile? This is a really common problem with hamburger buns because that darn top is so soft. 
this softness doesn't hold up at packaging and therefore wrinkles appear at the top of the buns during storage and distribution and it results in what we call crow's feet. This phenomena is caused by the following. Too much oxidation, excessive oven spring, stronger flour, and improper cooling. Oxidation. Too much oxidation will make the bun rise more. This gives the bun more volume without a solid internal structure resulting in the collapse of the top of the crown when the bun cools. Make sure that you control your oxidation levels and don't overdose on oxidizers like ascorbic acid, potassium bromate, or glucose oxidase. Oven spring. Oven spring is the nemesis of quality bun products. Excessive oven spring in the oven will cause a massive collapse at the top of the bun. This is caused by the oxidizing agents or yeast. If you are at an appropriate oxidizing level, then the best would be to implement an early yeast kill. Go on to our thermal profiling page. We recommend a yeast kill at 50% of the baking time. Therefore, at a bake of 10 minutes, the internal temperature of the bun must reach 132 degrees Fahrenheit or 56 degrees Celsius within five minutes. Many times, oven spring continues if yeast kill reaches 60%. I found success rate at reducing yeast kill to 45% so as to successfully stop any kind of oven spring. So do your best in reducing yeast kill, all right? Flour. This might sound contradictory, but hear me out here. Many times, bakers don't understand why strong flour is bad for you. So here's an example on why it is. The stronger the flour, the more it will provide a strong oven spring. You don't want any oven spring on buns at all. So if your flour is too strong, it's time to negotiate for a blend of flours to get that strength down. Doesn't this also give you an opportunity to reduce the price of the flour for your buns? Remember, stronger flour results in oven spring, which is truly bad for the wrinkling situation. Cooling. Proper cooling of buns need to happen. Go to our cooling page and understand what insufficient cooling really means. You really need to cool to an interior temperature of 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius and get it firm enough, but not too firm, before you package it. In high-speed situations, the wrapping station fastens the buns too tightly. And if you do this without proper cooling, the bun is squeezed at the top of the bun and it smashes down on the bottom buns as well, resulting in major wrinkling of the buns. So watch your cooling and your wrapping station. I hope I was able to answer some of your questions on staling and product quality today. This is so much more important than many bakers think, especially when you start seeing product quality issues. Well, that's all I have for today. Okay, do you have more questions for me? You can leave them on here on the comment page or Wikipedia topic pages. Hey, I love my jobs with this question, so keep them coming. But remember, bakers, don't forget to check out our sponsor showcase on Wikipedia. Contact our sponsors and thank them for bringing this information to you for free. Wikipedia is free and reliable because of our sponsors. So thank you, sponsors. And till the next time, bakers, have a question. Wikipedia it!